We will now hear from Ms. Kimba Smith Pradia. Good afternoon again. In April 1995, I was sentenced in Virginia, in a Virginia U U.S. District Court, to a 24.5 year prison sentence as a first time nonviolent drug offender. I was the girlfriend of a drug dealer who was physically abusive. Due to our nation's harsh and disproportionate conspiracy and crack cocaine drug laws, even though the prosecutor stated that I never handled, used, or sold any of the drugs involved in my case, I was sentenced to the total amount of drugs within the conspiracy. Thank goodness for organizations such as the NAACP and that they were created for these purposes to deal with certain injustices. Because the NAACP Legal Defense Fund represented me pro bono and the NAACP advocated on my behalf as well. And actually it was years ago as a Rhodes Scholar that Ben Jealous was one of the first people to mention my case to President Clinton. After serving six and a half years in federal prison, President Bill Clinton commuted my 24.5 year prison sentence. Had it not been for this act of the United States President commuting my sentence, I would still be serving my prison sentence today until the year 2016. Despite receiving executive clemency, one of the collateral consequences of having been incarcerated is losing my right to vote. In 2008, during the most historical presidential election in the United States, I was not able to cast my vote due to state disenfranchisement laws. In Virginia, a convicted person would need to pay an outstanding fines and court costs, complete their supervised release, which I had 60 months of. Then after completing supervised release, there is a mandatory three or five year waiting period before a convicted person can apply for restoration of voting rights based upon if whether you um, have a nonviolent or violent offense. If you have a nonviolent drug charge, you automatically fall within the five year period simply because you have a drug case. I wasn't eligible to apply to have my rights restored until 2010. In 2009, I got married and moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, and I was unsure as to my voting status. But someone suggested that I go to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and fill out a voter registration form and just see what happens. Within a few weeks, I received my voter registration card, and in November 2010, I was able to vote for the first time in Indiana. Unfortunately, I will have to readdress this issue again for the 2012 elections because I will be relocating back to Virginia in June. Therefore, I have to go through the tedious and bureaucratic process of applying for restoration of my voting rights. I struggle with the fact that as of today that I cannot vote in Virginia because this is where my offense occurred, but in other states I wouldn't even have to deal with this issue. It is as if other states understand the need for one to be forgiven and move on with their life and not wanting them to feel isolated from the rest of the general population because they've been denied this basic human right. When my son was younger, I remember him asking me who I was going to vote for in the upcoming elections. And I found it hard to explain that Virginia has categorized me as not being human enough to vote because I have a past felony conviction. I remember going out um, with the get out the vote effort and I was with my son, this was on the day of the election um, and I was videotaping um, the differences between if you go to one um, poll site that, and it was in a, the suburbs of the city how it was a fast process and there weren't long lines. But then when I took him on the other more impoverished side, urban, urban communities, he saw how there were um, very long lines. And at that particular point, I had thought that I would, you know, be out on the streets, you know, excited, just, you know, recording people and um, just being a part of the process in that manner. But after I dropped my son off at school, I went home and 
I was depressed and sad as if I still did something wrong because I wasn't afforded the same opportunity as everyone else on that day. And it disturbs me at the fact that the only citizens that are not afforded the right to vote are mentally disabled people and minors. Virginia and other states want to continue to put people with felony offenses in this category, even though we are and can be productive taxpaying members of society. I speak for many. Nationally, more than five million citizens are disenfranchised from being a part of the political from being a part of the political process simply because of their past felony conviction. And more than two million are African Americans. And I represent many. I'm not just speaking on behalf of my own personal situation. Um, I've been blessed where I did receive executive clemency from the United States as it relates to drug sentencing and policy. And it would have been very easy for me to just shut that door and move on with my life and not even deal with these issues. But like Martin Luther King said, a threat, any threat to justice, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So for me coming out, it's been important for me to still continue speaking out for the voiceless and speaking out for the millions who wish th that they had the opportunity in 2012 to be a part of this political process, which is a basic human right. Thank you.